Your children can only love according to the experience that they've received of love as a child. In other words, for most kids, they can only love as you've loved. Your kids can only love as you have loved them. So, realizing that will transform your your determination to be all the love that you can be. And then they will have the freedom to automatically fall into that, you see. This is your gift to them. Literally your loving kindness. For that's what they will be able to do quite naturally. When it's needed, so to speak. It'll come spontaneously forth. You as a parent are an incredible blessing. I know you forget that in the busyness of life and the petty traumas that come from day to day and the major ones too. But You are their lifeblood, you know, in childhood. And yes, it is the case, God loves and cares for them through you. But it is through you. And of course it's through you because he wants to bless you too. That you have the experience and the blessing that flows from such, of loving in this transitory world, but for an eternal glory, you see, that you are ever furnished with this, purposing to love, which is, of course, your validity in heaven. When you are in heaven, it's because you purpose to love. Hence, when you fall in love as a teenager or an adult, you experience heaven. And you want the whole world to be where you are in the sense of that glorious feeling, I was going to say, that lovely being. We're back to John 17 again, that they may be with me where I am. I'm in the presence of you, Father. And it's, to say overwhelming is, is minimal, I mean. Your presence is just infinite. And I want them to be where I am too. For this is the great treasure of all eternity. To experience your company. Your incredible blessedness. What the near-death experience people refer to as overwhelming love. When they, the Christian ones, meet Jesus, you know. I mean, in their experience of near death. God comes in the form that they can recognize. Jesus. Because they spent their life uh, more or less worshipping Jesus. Perhaps less, but you know what I mean. They see Jesus as God. Well, okay. If that's the coat I have to put on, I put on the coat of Jesus. So that it's understood by you. Because I love you. But it's really me, your heavenly dad. <laughs> I want to tell you this. <laughs> Not just my messenger. I don't mean that in a, a rejecting way.
Where was I? Hang on a minute. Yes, as from the beginning of this recording, look, your love of them is absolutely cardinal. Without it, they'll be bewildered in life, not knowing from where to start. Every parent gives some measure of love, else the child would be dead. Well, unless they're rescued by someone else, of course, who acts as parent. In which case, well, how wonderful. They've come to your rescue. But, you know, even a bad parent that remains a parent and, you know, still having the custody of the child, well, if the child survives, then they must have been a parent to that extent. And that is something to work from. You know, your meals were provided. They were rotten and not carefully cooked, perhaps, because parent didn't care much for you, but did care a bit didn't just let you start to death. So you do have something, you see, to build on. But of course what we want, ideally, is a lot for them to build on. A firm foundation. Something wonderful. And that's what you, as a loving parent, try to give. Bless you. And you are blessed. Because it is in this giving that you find the blessedness of heaven, which is giving. Not selling, not trading, not stealing, giving. <laughs> mm, bless you. Thank you, Dad. <laughs>